Hello again, hope you're doing well, and thank you for joining us for what is now the fourth instalment of debunking claims that the ISS is fake. The first was us looking at specific aspects of several different clips from on board the space station that had been sent to me by one of my Patreon backers because it was making them skeptical. The second was looking in detail at the most popular of those clips and showing how it can't have been faked on Earth. And the third was photographing the ISS after I was challenged to do so by user Pokey. And for the many people who'd asked for an update about whether or not Pokey stuck to their promise about apologising and conceding, uh, they did at least acknowledge that I hadn't faked anything, although they, as of yet, I don't believe have actually specifically apologised, and they did also try arguing that it doesn't prove that there's humans in the space station and that space is fake although they accept that we've been into low Earth orbit. I'm not quite sure how those ideas fit together. And those videos are all linked below for anyone that wants to check them out. So we've covered the footage from inside the space station. Today we're going to dispel the claims that the exterior footage from the ISS, such as spacewalks, is just done on Earth in a swimming pool. I think a lot of this idea stems from things like the level films, which, for example, included footage of someone addressing the Brevard County Commissioner's Board asking for them to launch an investigation into NASA because of apparent proof that the ISS is fake. There's now clear evidence of NASA using numerous methods to grossly mislead the public about astronauts being on the International Space Station. Now, surely they aren't filming these spacewalks in an underwater pool and then editing them to appear if they're in space. Because that sure would be something, wouldn't it? Now, I've since had several people commenting on my recent videos claiming the ISS must be fake because NASA is now being investigated about it. In reality, they aren't. You can find the entirety of that commissioner's meeting from April 4th, along with the minutes of it, on the Brevard County website, which I will link below for you. And the segment in question is part of public comments. It's nothing more than a chance for the public to raise their concerns. The commissioners don't adhere to what's being asked. They just listen to what the public concerns are, and they can then be brought back as an item for agendas in the future if they feel it's worthy. Rather unsurprisingly, Brevard County don't seem to have selected that particular concern for further discussion, and NASA are not being investigated for faking the space station. Today, it's just too easy to share false information that looks legit. And let's face it, even major news outlets tend to sensationalize their content to generate clicks. It's just gotten so bad now, I don't even want to pay attention to it most of the time. But I still want to be informed about what's going on. Which is why I'm excited about Ground News. The company was actually founded by a former NASA engineer. Now, they're not so much a news outlet themselves, but rather a central hub to make sense of the news using data. On their website and app, you can see all of the articles about any given event and compare the information to make informed decisions for yourself. For example, take the recent news about SpaceX sending Saudi Arabian astronauts to the space station, including the nation's first female. Now, on the right, you can see the number of sources that are reporting on the story and where they fall on the political spectrum. Now, these bias ratings are actually generated from three independent news monitoring organizations. Below that, there's then also a rating for factuality of each article. You can then make an informed choice about which article, if any, you'd like to view, and you can filter the articles based on their political bias as well. So if you're tired of unreliable news, or you want to get a well-rounded view of any issue, check out Ground News today. And be sure to use my link below to get 30% off their Vantage All Access subscription. Right, back to the video. There are several aspects to the claims about the spacewalks being filmed underwater. For starters, a lot of it stems from the fact that NASA have a mock-up of the ISS that is underwater. It's their neutral buoyancy lab in Houston. Astronauts use this accompanied by divers for the purpose of training. I know, right? Fancy not just picking random people off the street, throwing them in a rocket and just hoping for the best. They make them train? And like most forms of training, it's most effective when it resembles the real experience as close as possible. 
but obviously an exact replica of real environments isn't always possible. For example, militaries conduct training exercises to mimic combat situations, but they don't start shooting at each other. And underwater happens to be the closest reproduction possible on Earth of a weightless environment that can be sustained for long periods of time. Weightlessness can be done in a zero-g plane, but this only happens for very short periods before stopping. Not enough for astronauts to be able to practice full EVA situations. The only way that they could manage it in a plane would be if the plane was high enough to take hours to fall back to Earth. Now, comparing footage from the actual EVAs versus footage of the underwater training, there are some clear clues straight off the bat that they are two completely different environments. The key one being the lighting. If you've ever been swimming underwater, you will have probably noticed that if you're anywhere near the surface, the light shimmers all over the place because the surface of the water is constantly moving and refracting the light. So you get bright streaks where the light is being focused like a magnifying glass. You can even see examples of this on the surface of NASA's underwater mock-up. The way to avoid this is to go dozens of feet down so that the light has enough distance to be able to disperse. However, this then means that you get equal amounts of light coming in from multiple directions. As such, shadows then become much fainter, only really becoming visible when two objects get very close to each other but that's not what we see in the EVA footage from the ISS. The shadows are well defined even when the object that's casting the shadow is quite far away. And it's not like this could be achieved with an underwater lighting setup and no light source outside the pool because as you can see from nighttime scuba diving clips, you still have the problem that if the light source is close to the subject, then you get brighter light nearer to the light source and it drops off significantly in the distance, which again, we don't see in the ISS footage. If the light source was put further away to create a more even light, then all of the water between would be reducing the amount of light reaching the ISS, so it would be very, very dim. Compare any underwater footage to the ISS footage and you'll see the lighting and shadows between them aren't even close to similar, because one of them has tons of water interfering with the light, whereas one of them doesn't. There are also claims that people see bubbles in the ISS footage, which apparently proves it's underwater. Now, we do occasionally see round droplets floating off things in the footage. However, it's a presumption to say that these are air bubbles underwater. For starters, just like how air in water forms ball shapes, water in air naturally forms ball shapes too. We can see that from water in zero-g planes. So liquid coming off the outside of the space station would look very similar to air bubbles underwater. Just look at the footage from the Russian Soyuz craft that had that huge leak recently. The telling part though that this isn't air bubbles underwater is that air bubbles underwater always float in the same direction, upwards towards the surface. Doesn't matter what direction you blow the bubbles out, they immediately start heading straight for the surface. And yet the bubbles on the ISS footage travel in all directions, which is impossible on Earth underwater. There's also the fact that they tend to shimmer and move about as they fight through the water resistance, whereas the bubbles we see in space hold a rigid shape once they detach, showing that there is nothing acting upon them. And speaking of things being either rigid or flimsy, that brings us on to apparent proof from Flat Earth the Level Earth Observer. Sorry, he keeps getting annoyed at me because he claims he's not a Flat Earther, but rather a, quote, demonstrable realist that thinks the Earth is flat. Although I think we're about to demonstrate that he's not particularly observant. So recently he put out a rather racist titled video comparing footage from NASA of astronauts doing an EVA outside the International Space Station to footage from China's Space Administration of their Taikonauts doing an EVA outside the Tiangong Space Station. And he claims that the hatches prove it's shot underwater. Oh, no, this is great. We're only seconds in and we got the Chinese exposing NASA. Please note the solid hatch here the Chinese are using to exit their space station 
and supposedly enter the vacuum of space. Now, as most will know, we visit this channel. Pretty much most of the spacewalks are filmed underwater. And when you have scenes of astronauts finishing their spacewalks and going back to the space station after a long so-called EVA, the hatch essentially has to be floppy because they're underwater. If it was solid, like we saw the Chinese just now, then it would have too much resistance against the water. Now, if our mate was in the vacuum of space, there would be no resistance here. He'd just pull it down and it'd be done and dusted. Because he's in water, even his soft hatch <laughs> is meeting resistance against the water, naturally. So he claims that the ISS hatch is this flimsy material, unlike the Tiangong using a solid door, and that's because it has to be a flimsy cover because a solid door couldn't be opened easily underwater. Now this material isn't actually a hatch, it's a thermal cover that they close across the outside of the airlock to prevent the airlock door from suffering any major changes in temperature. The actual hatch on the ISS also opens inwards just like China's. China's however doesn't have a separate thermal blanket because as you can see, theirs has the thermal material already installed on it. It's pretty common for such airlock doors to open inwards for simpler construction. When EVAs aren't taking place, the airlocks of themselves are pressurized just like the rest of the space station, meaning the hatch has a higher pressure pushing against it from inside than outside. If the hatch was built to open outwards, then it would have a constant pressure trying to force it open into space, so the locking mechanism and the seals would have to be constantly fighting against this. By having a hatch opening inwards, the greater pressure from inside actually helps keep the hatch pushed shut, much like how submarines external hatches open outwards, because the weight of water when it's submerged would then be pushing it closed rather than trying to force it open. Anyway, the point is that the ISS does have a solid hatch, and we can even see them closing it during EVAs which immediately causes problems for LEO's claim that they don't use a solid hatch underwater because they wouldn't be able to freely move it. And speaking of which, note how the cover behaves when they do open it. It's acting flimsy when they're pulling on particular parts of it, but when they throw it open, it holds its shape perfectly until it crashes into another part of the space station. Only then does it bend. And not only that, but when it rebounds back, it holds its shape again. If this footage was underwater, the cover would be bending backwards as they push it open, because the top of it would have to travel further than the lower part, so it would induce more drag from moving through the water. Also note how once the hatch settles down and stops, it then remains static even though there's astronauts climbing out next to it. A large boxy backpack like what they're wearing moving through water would cause disturbances to the water which would then cause the hatch cover to swash around. There's then also the problem of colour cast. I'm sure most of you are aware but when you go on the water everything looks blue. Now that's because the water is actually filtering out the red light and leaving only really the green and blue sides of the spectrum. And we can see this even in NASA's own training footage. When the astronauts go to the bottom of the pool, their white suits suddenly start looking blue. Now, we can try and correct this footage using the white balance tool. You select the white part of the scene, such as the suit, and it will shift the colors of that to make it white, along with everything else as well. But you will note it doesn't fix the red. There's parts of the suit that have red accents, well, when they're out of the water, those parts are very vibrant red. And yet under the water, even with the corrected colors, they now look more like a deep burgundy because the light is being filtered out by the water. But when we look at those red parts of the suit in the EVA footage from outside the space station, we see the reds look as they're supposed to look, which suggests they're not underwater. You can also see as well the shadows changing throughout an EVA across the entire space station, with even these shadows on the solar panels remaining parallel to each other, which confirms the light source causing these shadows is very far away. And if you view the full EVA broadcasts, you can even see the astronauts in the spacesuits returning back into the space station. 
Now, have those EVA astronauts just managed to get through that hatch opening with a wire harness on, or does NASA have some secret technology that's allowing the other astronauts to live underwater without extra breathing equipment? Actually, on a side note, as a photographer, my personal favourite part of looking through all of this broadcast was the part where, as the two astronauts in the ISS are waiting for the other two to finish reboarding, the woman grabs the camera off the wall and snaps a shot, which we can then see appear on the camera display. Now, that camera is a Nikon D5 DSLR, which on its own weighs 1.4 kilos. That looks to be fitted with a 17-35 f2.8, which is 800 grams. And it also has a flash gun on. So combined, that's more than 2.5 kilos of camera, which she then sticks to the wall via two small Velcro pads. On Earth, I wouldn't trust sticking that to the wall if it was wrapped in 40 feet of Velcro. Anyway, that's going to wrap it up for this video. Hopefully that has now debunked the idea that the ISS is fake, but feel free to let me know if you've got any more because they're rather fun to cover. If you've enjoyed this video and you haven't already done so, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons and hopefully we'll see you in the next video.